And we're going to start with that caster wheel here. So as we're designing things, we can design things uh, uh, with our legacy methods if we wanted to, or we can just say, okay, let's just design what we actually need. But right now I have this legacy design that uh, has a caster frame in here that's, that's, uh, that looks like this here. First thing we do is actually we can switch over from design to gener gener design in here. And what we do when we switch over to general design, it's going to ask us uh, to create a new study. So we're going to use this structural component study. Um, there is fluid path studies inside of Fusion for um, actually generating the correct, uh, actually generating the optimized uh, path of, of fluids as well. Uh, but with this, with the generative design uh, webinar we're doing today, we're going to do the structural component. So we just create the study. And at this point, it switches over to our general design workspace. And with this, we've got uh, different, uh, we've got our design in here. But what we can do is we can turn on or off our components that we don't need necessarily. So for example, like I'm not going to need this wheel right now. Um, I'm not going to need to see that. I just want to really keep on this frame component at this at this point. I'm going to turn off this ball bearing. Let's turn off that top plate and also this threaded axle with the bolts at the end. So we end up with something like this. Um, and this is what we can use to start out with our gender design study. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show how to create our preserves and our obstacles for this to start our gender design. So I'm going to switch over to my next uh, one here. It's just the next step out of the way. So I'm going to start my preserves and, and, and obstacles. And it's pretty easy inside of gender design. Um, and how to do this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come up to my edit model button. So we already had our study created that when we switched over the the general design workspace, it already created a study for us. And you can see it's called study study one. And now what I can do here is I can edit the model. And when I do the edit the model, I can come in here and now I can create uh, my my uh, new solids if I wanted to. I can create some connector obstacles. Um, and when I do this, it's actually going to just create geometry within the generative design workspace. It's not actually editing my design, but it's just creating new solids for me to use for that preserve and for those obstacles. So what I would do is I would come in here and I would say, OK, let's make a, a um, obstacle because we don't want when we go to create or when we go to uh, produce this generative design outcome, we don't want it to grow into um, this area inside here, because that's where the wheel is going to be placed inside there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an obstacle geometry. So what I do is I come in here, I'm going to create a new sketch. And I'll place on that face. And I just go ahead and create my center diameter circle. And I'll say it's 7.25. We'll just do that for my wheel. Finish my sketch. And let's extrude that out to the next side over here. Oh, and not join. Uh, cancel that. Sorry. Let's do this. Extrude that. That. And extrude that over here. And we're gonna make that new body. Okay. So that would be an obstacle for keeping gender design from growing. So when we're thinking about this, I like to think about this as something in nature, like uh, ivy or. Uh, maybe a bonsai tree. <laughs> um, we we create some obstacles for it to grow around. So it's going to start, and we're going to create preserved geometry around this area in here, where it's going to bolt to that axle in there. Also, some preserved geometry up here at the top, where where it bolts to the top plate there. Um, and what it does is is it says with this obstacle geometry from this area here, where it's bolting, do not grow inside of that obstacle. So go around that obstacle there. All right. So when I hit finish edit model, I can say, OK, that's my obstacle. OK. And you can see how it has turned red. So that's going to be an obstacle for this to not grow into. I can also, in my edit model, add something called connector obstacles. This is something great for like bolting locations. So with like bolting holes and everything like that, I can pick a, uh, a first part of my shaft, second part of the shaft. And then say, I, hey, let's have a bolt head on it. Or if it needs some tool clearance, well, we can add tool clearance on that as well. 
Okay, so with this, I can I can define whether we want some obstacle in there for the bolt to be able to fit or the tool clearance to be able to fit a tool inside there so it doesn't grow into there so we can fit that tool in. I can do it for that side. I can also do it for the other side. Okay, when I hit finish edit model there, you can see that since we're using a connector obstacle, it automatically takes that and, and sends that to the obstacle geometry. Then also what we can do is come in here and I'm going to create a new sketch on this and I'm going to create a diameter circle here. I'm just going to use the same diameter of that down at the bottom, finish that sketch and then extrude that out to here. And I'll say that's a new body. Okay, and that's going to be my preserved geometry then at that point. So I'm going to finish edit model. And I'm going to say, okay, preserve geometry is that location there. Because we need something to have that axle go through the bolt to down there for the inside of the wheel. So if I turn off my model components now of that frame, you can see now it's starting to build some areas here. So we've got some preserve. We've got some obstacles. So uh, essentially what this is going to do is it's going to start at this preserve. And I'm going to have some other preserves here at the top for where it bolts to that plate. And it's going to take that and and uh, grow that from this preserve geometry up to that other preserve geometry by going around the obstacles, our, our constraints and our loads into this. So by adding a constraint and load in there, we can come in and into our load case, into our study, and add our loads and constraints. And that's what those buttons here do with the structural constraints and structural loads. So I'm going to turn off my obstacle geometry right now. And I'm going to add, right now you can see there's a load on here that's uh, actually this This is gravity load. It automatically comes in. Um, of course, everything's going to be, um, gravity is going to apply to everything, so uh, I'll keep that on. But if you <laughs> if you wanted to actually make this the, be used on Mars or <laughs> some other uh, location or, you know, on, uh, whatever, you can actually change those magnitudes and everything in here too and change those units. All right, so when I'm going to come in, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to add a constraint in here. And we've got our different constraints, fixed pin, frictionless, or remote. I'm just going to add a fixed pin constraint on this, and I'm just going to select that target inside there and hit OK. Now that's fixed in place on that. Uh, and we can add other, other types of constraints if we wanted to. Depending on your design, you can add those in. You can have multiple in there. So there's our load case. And with our load case, this is going to be... Uh, we're gonna, like I said, we have multiple load cases. Uh, we have the load case up 30 degree and negative 30 degree. Now, uh, with this, I'm just going to add the load case up and then switch over to my next one with all the load cases. But I can show you how these work here. So with this load case, I'm going to pop in that. And let me pop in my information here. Make sure we got that. Okay, so I'm going to pop in the loads, and I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be a force, uh, but we've got other loads in here. we got pressure moment, bearing loads, remote force, and remote moment loads in there. So I'm going to hit the force, and I'm going to select my target, and it's going to be inside of that in here. And you can see that it points directly up. So that's going to be our, our uh, structural load going up at that point. Of course, we've got the rotation um, icons here that we can use to rotate our loads around. Um, that would be how you would add the negative 30 and, and 30 by using the degree angles here. Um, that's how you would add those different loads in there for one. You know, it rolls along. You can add the, the loads at different angles inside of there. So I'm going to hit that, that, and yeah, we'll say, okay, this is a magnitude of 200 pounds and I can add multiple loads to both of these as well so let me undo that and I can show you so I can add both loads to that so I can say the inside of that and inside of that to both of those and then say yep yeah, 200 okay so if we look at that now we've got our force there on that now, for the load cases, I can right-click and I can uh, clone that one. 
or it can say new load case and just re and redo the load. If I clone it, it will actually clone that. I can rename it to rename these by slow clicking on these and say that's load case up. Maybe this is load case 30 degrees. And with this one here, I can activate that and say, all right, now this load is going to be not this force. And we can say this is going to be, and I can even take a look and see. Yeah, negative 30 degree angle. And I can then do that same thing for the 30 degree angle. And we've got our objectives. So we can say, okay, let's minimize the mass on this or maximize the stiffness. And we can set our safety factor depending on what we want here as well. We can add modal frequencies, displacements, uh, if there's any buckling inside there. Some new things that they've added in here recently um, inside that. So really the, the, the things that we need to input um, at the minimum is our either the maximized mass stiffness and the safety factor that we want in here and we can also add the manufacturing methods that we want to add in here too whether we want it unrestricted unrestricted means it's gonna doesn't care about the manufacturing method it's gonna just go ahead and and create design however it wants re, unrestricted it, it does not take into account any of the, the method of manufacturing we can also add additive in here, milling, and we can have three axis or five axis in there. And we can also do uh, die casting as well inside there. And what I would probably do, uh, this is just a demo I can add. I, I've added a bunch in here, but I probably per, uh, make multiple studies in here and have probably additive as the first study and milling as a second study and um, die casting as a third study in there. I've got my materials. Take a look at that. And let's add those materials inside of here. So I've got additive materials. I've got the nonlinear. I've got material library in here. I can say, okay, let's make this out of like aluminum. And just drag and drop it up there. If I want to make it out of um, stainless steel. Yep, go ahead and drag it up in there. And then those materials are what can be generated out and uh, created without the, the outcomes depending on the material and also the manufacturing method that we had uh, set up inside. Then at that point, what we can do after we've set up all this information here in the very beginning uh, up to that panel, we can then do a pre-check on this. So a pre-check means that it has all the information needed inside of that. Uh, but we also have this previewer too, and the previewer will allow you to preview kind of what Generative Design is going to do. This is going to be this is a free option to be able to preview this. It's not going to be as refined as what uh, we get from actually generating the outcome and, and seeing the out uh, seeing the finished outcomes there. But it's going to be doing this. It's a local kind of a local simulation. Um, it's generating all local here. It's going to take those preserves and the obstacle geometry and, and show a preview of what it kind of thinks it's going to do in the very beginning. It's really, really rough. I can set up a symmetry plane here. And I don't think I have any set up. Oh, I do have one set up. So let me, let me actually remove that one and I'll show you how that works. So with symmetry plane, we just click on that and we say, okay, what plane is in the center of the symmetrical um, um location like a mirror plane there so i'll just say okay we've got a plane that's directly in the middle of this design let's just use the xz plane and the xz plane so that way it's symmetrical on this design of uh, the design on this side compared to that side over there and okay easy enough that's all that's all you have to do for that um then we can also like i said with the starting shape now these that symmetry plane and starting shape are optional um so the starting shape here we can use, I can turn back on the model components, turn back on that frame inside there. Let's turn that back on and say, okay, starting shape. And let's pick that. And we can use the, the, the um, topology optimization. There's some options down here. We want to add or remove the material from that starting shape or just remove it fully uh, topology optimization there and kind of in, uh, influence the end design so that's how we could do that and those are completely optional for this demo i'm just showing this how, how you do it but i don't have it actually on the outcomes. after we have everything set up yeah we have a green check we check check the previewer hey it looks good um and at that point then we can hit the generate button the generate button will allow us to then 
take this study that we have selected and then generate that. And it sends it off to the Autodesk Cloud. It generates all on the back end. Uh, it does not use your processing power on your machine. Uh, it will allow you to uh, you know, send it off. You can actually close the design. You'll get information back saying hey, it's done. Um, you'll get a notification here, uh, outcomes are done. And if you keep the design open, what it'll do is it'll actually start to open up in something called the Explore window. And the Explore window will give you all of the outcomes coming back that it's actually generated depending on the manufacturing methods and also the materials. So we can see that we have some recommended outcomes here at the top. These are the ones that have converged, they're called, and those are the ones that are, are um, um, completely done that's actually found the solution for them. Um, the ones that are there, there might be some there called completed, um, not in this example, but if they are ever say completed means it actually stopped before it could actually hit the um, intent, the, uh, the uh, criteria that you had set up. So converge means it's, hey, it, we, we got it at a, a certain iteration, we're, we're good to go. And it gives us recommended ones here at the top here. And I can look at these as a thumbnail view and I can filter these out by volume, mass, and everything like that, objectives. I can see properties of each one as well. I can see a scatter plot view, and you can see that, okay, we've got different colors for our different materials. We have uh, the ones with thumb, uh, uh, thumbs up, being the ones that are good. And we also have, and we can set up in our, our volume and mass or whatever for this the vertical, vertical values or the uh, uh, horizontal values we can set set these as well inside of there. We also have a table view so we can sort by different columns also there. Now, when I have a, a, a converged study that I like, that's a recommended outcome, maybe I want to take a look at that. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to double click on that and it will open up that design. So we've got that result. Just open it up. You can see the information about it on the right-hand side. We can see it as a model view. We got our transparent view. We also have our stress view in here, so we can see the different stresses on this, because um, it is kind of doing a simulation also on the fly as well, as it's being uh, um, generated. There's design previews of what's going to look like when you export designs. You can actually see the preserved geometry and also the um, obstacle geometry. So if we take a look at this, let me click on the model view and then rotate this around here. We can see that has not grown into anything that we set as obstacles. So it's taken the preserved geometry and grown from that preserved geometry down to the other geometry we have, but it has not grown and created any structure inside of the obstacles that we have. And I can actually take a look at another one here. Let's take a look at this one here. And let's look at that. So this one's a little bit more It'll probably maximize the stiffness and that the strength of this one. You see it's kind of grown around the obstacle there. And also here at the top where we have another bolting connection, it's grown around that. Go back to that one. Okay, and with this we can actually compare other other ones as well. So we can compare that to that one that's a little stronger. We can take a look at these both together. And let's say, hey, let's use that one on the left. We'll keep that one open. Uh, we can then um, add labels, tags to it. But then we can actually export this as designs. We can ex export the mesh out to that. Um, and uh, with those, then, then we can use those in our assemblies. 